this could be beautiful. Okay, I've been asked this question um, about when I, uh, or when uh, someone hears questions, uh, they get lodged into their thinker. They don't go into the experiential. And also, um, I often talk about the uninterested observer, if I could talk about that in a different way. And also uh, talking about the um, coordinator as well. So, um, okay, so the, um, okay, so the thinker. Okay, so the thing, of course, is, you see, what once you do a spiritual practice for long enough, um, uh, once you do a spiritual practice for long enough, you, you're eventually looking for a way of intuiting non-verbally what the lesson's about. Um, so you, you, you get what's called a non-verbal sense of what's meant to happen by doing a spiritual practice over and over again, whether it's meditating, Course of Miracles lessons, uh, chanting, whatever it is. So eventually, you, you're in the beginning, because you you operate out of your head, you think it's about your head understanding something. But actually, all spiritual practice is about finding a way to get out of your head and into the infinite presence. So, uh, so if you, it's not about understanding the practice. Understanding the practice is not not the solution. You do the practice if it's a good practice, and then eventually you you you're in the beingness. You're in the silence. You're in the stillness. You're in the infinite presence. Uh, you're in that which is beyond thought. Um, so if you keep doing a practice and eventually keep regularly connecting to the infinite beingness, then at a certain point, there should be a in non-verbal intuitive recognition that, oh, ah, I've just got it. I just said the prayer. I surrender everything and all my thoughts and I feel the silence. You don't do this from your head and you just stay in the silence. You just remain in the silence and you try not to pick up another thought. And that's it, you see. Eventually... When you read a, a lesson like I surrender my thoughts to God, um, you're not really trying to say I surrender my thoughts to God and then think about it and then keep saying I surrender my thoughts to God for all eternity. That's not the point. The point is you keep saying it as a supplication, please, the infinite, help me release my limited addiction to my limited thinking. And then, ah, I got it. There's a silence here. You don't get it in your head. Your head is what we're trying to get rid of. Uh, and then once you, re you there's a resonance with the silence, that's it. You remain in there for as long as you can before you get tempted to hook out into another thought. The only reason you hook out into another thought is because it's like a tempting addiction. Uh, what, what else is on in the drama factory of my ego that I need to hook into? I mean, there's nothing useful there. Uh, you know, the, 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 um, the more inspiration, the more a channel of, the infinite you want to be, the less you want to be caught in the limited aspect of uh, letting your letting the limited ego try and run the show or be the orchestrator. So that's the thing with, um, so you really, then once you're in the resonance, you realize what the words were about. And then the more you do the words, they can be a reminder, but the reminder is just to, you already intuitively know it, the silence. So you're intuitively um, not even trying to say the words from your head. It should just be like a, a, a prompt to just go silent, really. So that's another way of um, talking about the thinker. You're not trying to think. Forget thinking. N never try and think again. I, I know that's not useful. You trying to understand anything is the problem. Uh, all all um, proper spiritual instruction is... Um, because you're stuck in the thinker, are words to guide you to let go of the thinker. But the but when instruction is given, it's not to carry on thinking and thinking and understanding. The instruction is given as a as a um, as a facilitator to help you let go of thought and be in the non-thought. So uh, you can see that the ego doesn't like that. So the ego wants to keep thinking about what was said or what's the meaning of the question or. How can I do this more perfectly? Now, that's the that's the booby trap. Uh, the thing is, like your your silent intention is to be free of thought and to stay free of thought forevermore. So that's another way. 
you know, so don't try and understand. I wouldn't try and understand spiritually. You just, you get an internal resonance. Is this book good? Is this teacher good? And if you get this internal internal resonance, uh, or you can get it, get it muscle checked, that this book is a good calibration, this teacher is, is integrous, uh, then you're doing it to go out of the thinker for good. That's the pur purpose. The purpose is not to think about what's being said. Unfortunately, you have to trust, you know, um, the teacher in the book. And if you have a wrong teacher and a wrong book, they can tell you the wrong stuff. But if you trust, it's, I mean, I mean certain, certain spiritual texts are classics, you know, like the big book, Of Course in Miracles. Uh, I think, you know, you can't, you can't, they're not kind of shady, unknown books. I don't think you can go wrong with stuff like that. My teacher is Dr. Hawkins. I stand by him 100% for the truth uh, that he shares. Okay, so, you know, the problem with being in the thinker when you're hearing stuff, so that's that. And the I talked about the uninterested observer. So the uninterested observer, okay, so another way of seeing it, if 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 a world is showing up if there's a world that's showing up um it's because one is interested in the world it's because um there's a vested interest uh something within you wants it to keep re-showing up so mm, another way of saying it is if there's anything showing up illness pain it's because um it's because you want that what do i mean you want that uh, he would want pain and suffering and all, all that horrible stuff. Well, it means it can mean something a bit more in depth than that. It means that you're vested in being separate. You're vested in being a body and as a body and as a mind, enjoying the ups and downs of life, having a limited life. Uh, but you, you're not admitting that that will involve suffering. So the pain is a consequence of you you wanting the good stuff in life, but not accepting that if you don't let the good and the bad go, uh, you're still going to get the bad. You can't just cherry pick, you know, I just want life to be all wonderful while I remain in my ego and never have any suffering because it's an illusion, you see. So if you want to be a body and want to be full of thoughts and, and being the controller of life and the orchestrator, then you know, uh, it's not it's not always going to be you're going to eat ice cream and have bliss because or be thinking and being an entity and enjoying the ice cream because, you know, eventually you find out it doesn't work because afterwards the pain comes or the illness comes or the or the or the diabetes comes or the comas come. So what the ego wants is that it wants to carry on being a, a separate identity and enjoying ice cream, carrying on being separate. So there's a consequence of remaining in the ego in, as a body mind think, thinker is that it's always trying to tell you that here's a way of just having an enjoyable life with no suffering but you got to be willing to now now the uninterested observer really another way of seeing it saying it i just thought today is um it's like it's like um you can, I can, I'm a hypnotherapist, so I'll give you a different way. It's just like, whatever it is, um, you're trying to, um, well, you can, you can try things. They're not exactly non-dual, but you can try and, you know, like um, have an image, you can do it, try and do an image. Like uh, I've got an image of pain in, pain in my body and, um, and then make an image of it all gone and flushed out in white. Yes, that would be one. So you can dissolve, dissolve it image with an image rather than with thought. Maybe that could work better for some people. So you see the pain and it's got a representation and you blank it out in light. So eventually there's no, um, there's no, um, you're not interested in registering anything. So that's another way of saying it. Um, um, the It's a way of, Unfortunately, if you've got huge physical illness, uh, usually you can't get rid of it until you've surrendered it, and you can't surrender it until you let it be there. So, because if you don't want it to be there, then you're fighting it and resisting it, you see. So the first step is, you know, let, let's say there's all kinds of pain all over my body, and it's horrible, like, how do I get rid of this quickly? Well, 
first thing I'd do is not try and get rid of it quickly, but just um, I would just let it be there uh, and welcome it. And um, the thing I'd do is go, well, OK, it's here and OK, let's see if it can kill me. Uh, come on, um, you know, and if it's going to it was going to take several hours killing me, so be it. Uh, so you just you just try and stop all the resistance and trying to get rid of it and let it do its worst. Uh, and then usually what will happen is um, so in that way, you're not resisting it or trying to make it go away. At a certain point, then it will start to run out of steam. It could take hours or days sometimes, depends what it is. It'll run out of steam and you'll get periods of relief. Uh, and then and then you'll get more hope later on, because especially if you can you can have enough courage to go through the worst it can do. Once you've gone through the worst it can do, it's always going to get better. Go, come on, whatever it is, like you feeling like you're going to have a heart attack. All right, then kill me. I'm waiting. All right, can we have some more pain, please? Can the, can my heart pop out of its chest? Might also get it over and done with. So eventually with that kind of attitude, um, it just gets absolutely horrific. And then it starts to subside, unless you're dead. <laughs> it subsides and... Uh, it subsides and you go oh my god i went through it without trying to run away and i'm still alive and once you do that with the worst possible it can do with you because the thing that i found is if you chicken out before it's done the worst and it starts to alleviate then you'll always be terrified of it always trying to be fighting it so some of the greatest things i've had are being willing to go through horrific pain and horrific situations without backing out and then realize I'm still alive afterwards and go, well, I can probably survive it again, you know, if it comes along, if it does come along. You get much stronger and, and you get much more relief from suffering in life. So um, I'm trying to talk about the uninterested observer. Well, well, OK, the uninterested observer. You see, don't be, don't, don't, you know, I've had a white light spiritual experience. I mean, there is no world unless you're interested. You know, it's only if you hook in, if you're interested in thoughts and bodies and and things, yeah, then they show up for you. And like some men are not interested in handbags and they never see a handbag, you know. And some people are really interested in handbags. They see handbags everywhere. When you're not interested in something, it will it will cease to show up. It's because you have to admit you're you on some level you want it to show up or you're holding another aspect which will make it show up. Just to be human means you're going to have ups and downs. So you want to be human, you want to be a thinker, you want a life which is always good, but you want to carry on being separate. So, you know, it's like um, that that's the problem with the ego when it's holding on to illusions. So you've got to recognize, you can ask for a miracle that you be shown why you're having pain and, and what it is in you that you're holding on to, that you're not willing to let go of. Sometimes it might be the opposite, like you want a happy life, but you want a happy life as an ego. You see, you see the contradiction there. You want to let you want to let go of the ego having a happy life because there's a problem. You see, so ask the Holy Spirit to to show you what the error is, and what you have to let go of. Because you know you often see there's a system which sets you up for pain. Um. Anyway, on some level, one is holding it in mind. You know, maybe not in a, in a literal way. I want pain. But there's something in you you're holding on to that needs to be released or cancelled. Um, so, um, and the orchestrator, this is also a good um, question. So there's often an unconscious, an unconscious, almost subliminal thing going on in the background trying to make a commentary. And it might not be really easily hearable, um, but it's kind of, and sometimes it's not. It's just not even in awareness. But it's going on, and it's sort of like, its programs are running you know it could result in depression or a mood swing or whatever it is so um with that what i would suggest uh, uh you do you can either, you can you can cancel it um you can observe it i cancel my unconscious thinker i cancel my unconscious i cancel i pray for a miracle and release of my unconscious the holy spirit um you know so uh our Ask, ask that any blind I pray to the Holy Spirit to reveal any blind spots or unconscious spots that they be shown to me so that I can remove, you know, cancel them or pray for, the, for them to be removed or that I become aware of them so that I can observe them. 
So, I mean, that's the trick. So the unconscious is a bit like blind spots. You've got them running in the background, but you don't even know they're there. And so they're causing problems. So it's it's an important one, especially when you have stubborn illnesses or stubborn problems. There's something you're not seeing, uh, which your ego doesn't want you to see, because if you saw it, you could, get, you could get rid of it. So you see, the ego doesn't really have your best interests at heart. It doesn't want you to be happy, joyous, and free, because it would rather its survival than you, than you uh, dissolve into the infinite. Okay, so... Um, yeah, that's what I would share on the orchestrator and some ways to release that. And I'll 